Tom Aspinall is going to get knocked out in embarrassing, brutal fashion at UFC 295 by Sergei Pavlovich, and here's why. Everything is in Sergei Pavlovich's favor for this matchup. Yes, Tom Aspinall is a more well-rounded MMA practitioner, but he does not have the style to beat Sergei Pavlovich. In honesty, I don't know who does. This is how the fight's going to go. Tom Aspinall has already shared his game plan, and honestly, it's the only game plan that gives him even a slight chance of beating Sergey. He has admitted he does not want to enter the pocket with Sergey Pavlovich. He does not want to trade with the man. He admits he's the most scary fighter in the UFC to him. Sergey Pavlovich does not share that mentality about Tom Aspinall. Yes, he considers Tom Aspinall a dangerous threat. He does not consider him the most dangerous man in the UFC. I would hazard to guess Sergei Pavlovich considers himself the most dangerous man in the UFC. There's point one, mentality. The mental state of these fighters is big, and especially at the top level, when minuscule things can change the outcome of a fight, Sergei Pavlovich's mindset is a big difference maker in this one. Tom Aspinall thinks he can lose. Sergei Pavlovich knows he can win. Humility is a good trait, but being overly humble is bad for a fighter. It shows a weak mind. And Tom Aspinall is overly humble, and he is also surrounded by a team like his father and stuff who make excuses for him. This is all a bad sign. Furthermore, he's unprepared for the fight. And I know sometimes a short notice camp can actually benefit a fighter. Like Bisbean has talked about this and other fighters have talked about this. How not having too long to focus on it actually helps them. It's not the case for Tom Aspinall. And also, Sergei Pavlovich has been training as a backup for months for the heavyweight title shot. Everyone's saying that Tom Aspinall is going to mog him cardio-wise. I do not know what you're basing that off of. I would probably, because we have a lot of question marks about their cardio... I would just place them around the same. You can't say Tom Aspinall has better cardio than him because he's gone to the second round in the UFC. Okay, who cares? Sergey Pavlovich has five-round fights outside of the UFC. Tom Aspinall does not. Like, Sergey has three-round and five-round decisions and then all first-round knockouts and then a third-round loss to Overeem. And that Overeem thing is a big, big factor in what is uh, influencing people's Picks in this fight. Oh, a washed Overeem ragdolled Sergei Pavlovich. You don't think that in the five whatever years since that fight, Pavlovich has made adjustments? He was like 24, 25 years old when that fight happened. He's improved massively since then. He talks about how he focuses on wrestling. Islam Makachev hypes up Sergei Pavlovich's wrestling. Just because Tom Aspinall is rugby tackling long, freaky-limbed Volkov, and ragdolling fat heavyweights like Jailton Almeida, the light heavyweight, can do, doesn't mean he's going to be able to do that to a real heavyweight, which leads us to another advantage here. Sergey Pavlovich has a real weight advantage over Tom Aspinall. Tom Aspinall weighed in at 258 in his last fight against Curtis Blades, which ended in a loss for him. And before that, he was consistently weighing in around like the high 240s, low 250s. Sergey Pavlovich always weighs in around 260. He has the real heavyweight advantage in this thing with a few pounds of muscle, which obviously translates to crazy power advantage. Sergey Pavlovich has a crazy power advantage over Tom Aspinall. Tom Aspinall, yes, has hand speed advantage when it comes to boxing and obviously a more dynamic striking arsenal with his kicks. I do not think he's going to be relying on the kicks because he's still admitting to knee issues. He was walking backwards on the treadmill in Embedded a week before the fight, complaining about knee pain and how this helps with his knee pain and stuff like that. Do not expect Tom to be throwing much kicks. And don't expect his footwork to hold up either. So he's got those advantages, like a slight boxing hand speed advantage. Sergey's power and precision more than compensate for that to me. Hence why Tom knows boxing's not gonna, boxing with the guys, not gonna pay off for Tom. Tom doesn't hit anywhere near as hard as him. Yeah, he can knock out Tibura, TKO Tibura, the knockout even. Just put Tibura on his butt. Anyway, Sergey brutalizes people. 
Tom knows this. The reach advantage is crazy for Sergey. Sergey has a six inch reach advantage, 78 inch reach for Tom to 84 inch reach for Sergey. It's crazy. Yes, Tom has a like a two inch height advantage. He's six foot five to Sergey's six foot three, but that doesn't matter, especially when the reach advantage is going to mitigate that entirely. And Tom's game plan suggests he's going to allow Sergey to put him on the back foot. That's very bad. Whoever gets the other on the back foot in this fight probably wins. But Tom's already admitting that he's not going to do that because he's scared of getting to the pocket. Sergey's not just going to let him back him up. He's not Curtis Blades. He's not just going to back up and try to box off the back foot. He's going to push right in. Hey, he wants a war. That's exactly what his game plan is. And this is a big thing. The game plans favor Sergey. Sergey's game plan doesn't really change much. He's going to march forward, try to trade with Tom. Tom's game plan is to try to manage distance and what? Enter into the pocket with his footwork and then get tagged because he has such tiny little arms. Or what? Stand at distance and tap legs and tap leg kicks out until his knee inevitably tweaks or whatever and Sergey can cut him off. Now, I'm not saying that uh, his knee is going to blow in this fight but there's a very good chance that injury is going to affect his speed plus he's going to be coming in closer to 260 he's going to be up at like the 258 or whatever he weighed in around curtis blades which means that speed is going to be slightly dropped down for tom a lot of his advantages don't matter against sergey this is how i feel the fight's gonna go they're gonna touch gloves or whatever ref's gonna send them in tom's gonna immediately try to be moving laterally moving back Sergey's going to march him down. It's only a matter of time, like I said, before Sergey's able to cut him off or able to clip him. Because if what's Tom going to do? Is he just going to literally dance around and try to win the fight on leg kicks? No, he's got to get in there and land some shots on Sergey. Sergey's going to hit you back. He's going to counter you. He's precise and he's quick with his boxing. He's not slow in the slightest. I would arguably say his boxing's way more dangerous than Tom's because of that speed, precision, and power. He's going to hit Tom on his nutcracker chin. Tom leaves his chin up, and he's also taller than Sergey. It's perfect. No matter what happens, he's going to be able to cut him off. Tom's going to be up against the cage, and then Sergey is going to hit him with something, and Tom's going to be forced to do either throw back in the pocket, which he says is his last thing he wants to do, or panic shot. Either one favors Sergey. If he throws back in the pocket, Sergey's going to land the harder better shots obviously because he also initiated the exchange and he's going first he's putting tom on the back foot tom's a good boxer how good is he off the back foot you know what i mean he's if he shoots a panic shot in that situation we've seen how sergey can handle panic shots from curtis i don't think tom's gonna be able to just take him down it's gonna get stuffed and sergey's gonna hurt him on the break bad Tom's going to stumble into the cage and just get his face smashed in as he covers up. You can't cover up against Sergey. Everyone knows this. Regardless, what are you going to do? Ref's going to wave it off. It's going to be a TKO. I don't see Tom going fully out. However, if Tom does try to push forwards, say he does, say he knows this, say he's thinking about this late. Oh, okay, Tom, you know, I, I can't go on the back foot. This is going to benefit Sergey immensely. So let me try to push forwards into Sergey, trade with him, use my slick head movement in my boxing. Sergey's going to catch you. You're going to go out cold like Stipe did for Sangonu. Just flop back on your knees. Bad. Either way, Tom's getting finished. It's going to be embarrassing. I do not see really many ways for him to win this fight. Now, I know a lot of people always wrestling. So how's he getting Sergey down? Like the first few minutes of this fight are where it's going to be decided and it's going to end. Anyway, let me know what you guys think about the fight. This is a very controversial fight, of course. People are very passionate about their picks. I like it. UFC 295 is going to be fun for this. I'm going to put out a video on Yeri Prohashka and Alex Pereira, my thoughts, my detailed thoughts on that tomorrow. Um, if you enjoyed the video, drop a like. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe. I post a wide variety of MMA content. I'd like to give a big thank you to all my channel members. Without you guys, the channel would not be possible. And a special thank you to all my Lion Tier members, Coltis Gordon, Uniform Down, Ninja Choke, Mexican Gnome, Clarence, Mike Brannigan, Javier, Cobra Kai, Pigger, Patrick Call, Droid C, John Paul DeHoria, Palpadink TV, Calico, Jack Clash, High Cap Native, Wings of Heart Problems, Boss Skaggs, RC Cola, and Bubster Johnson.
Dime papi. Dime mami.